Jensen of Stitch Quilting Co. We are now into week six of our Learn to Quilt Charity Quilt Along. I am so excited to see all of your pictures and everyone sharing. And I, just as a reminder, I am collecting for every quilt that's going to be donated, I'm going to be putting a square on my Pixel Heart quilt. And so the more quilts that you donate to some cause, the faster I can get my Pixel Heart quick quilt all finished and there's going to be a grand prize at the end for who gets that quilt. So just an incentive for that and if you send me a block then you get extra blocks that go on the Pixel Heart. So there's obviously more details on my blog and I'm just really excited because all the work we're doing right now is to give more love into the world. So. Today we're talking about free motion quilting. I know this is a part that scares a lot of quilters and I truly believe that I am a free motion quilting liberator. I will help you go past your fears. I have had some major fails in my free motion quilting. There is a quilt on my daughter's bed to this day that I absolutely love. I love the fabrics, I love the design. But I attempted to do the free motion quilting myself and it was the first time I tried to do something different than Stitch in the Ditch. And every time I look at the quilt, I love the colors, I love the design, but I have been tempted many times to get out my seam ripper and unpick the whole thing, put it back under my sewing machine and re-quilt it. However, I don't do that because I recognize that free motion quilting is a journey. And now that I quilt for people, I quilt for myself, and I love the free motion quilting process, I always know that next year I'm going to be better. The more I do something, just like anything, the more we do something and develop our talents and nur nurture them, we are going to get better. So please remember that. Don't look at my quilts and think, oh, I'll never be able to quilt like that, because who knows? Um, it's all about your desire and how much effort you're willing to put in. So please feel like this is a big pep talk, because it is. I started just the same as you. I was the stitch in the ditch queen, and so I'm going to help you to feel more confident. As I mentioned in my last video, some of the main key materials that you're going to need to do free motion quilting is a darning foot. So it looks like this. They look a little different. This one is an oval. Quite often they're open toe. There's different names for them. The other tool that I really love is the walking foot. And basically what a walking foot does is so underneath our machine here we have these little metal grippy things. Those are called feed dogs. Well the walking foot has feed dogs on the top. So if you can imagine these little tracks on the bottom, the feed dogs, they're going, they're feeding your fabric through. Now the walking foot does the same thing. So when you have the bottom and the top feed dogs feeding your quilt through, that's going to give you a lot of really good success because you've got your backing on the bottom, you have your batting in the middle, and your top. Your, and so when you are putting, when you're feeding that through your quilt, you're going to have even stitches, you're not going to have skipping stitches or anything like that. So it's really, really helpful. So we have a darning foot, we have a walking foot. Those are crucial for free motion quilting. The other thing that really helps is having a quilting table because my right hand has a place to go, but my if you don't have a table here, your left hand doesn't really have anywhere to go and then your fabric is all over the place. Now, this is a little quilting hack that I like to share with you. I just got this little fishing box at Dollarama, and basically it's a place where I can put my tools so they don't get lost. And so we've got, I have my, these are Mashinger gloves. I love the Mashingers. Uh, they have little grippies on them. They are lightweight, They're in, they are really breathable. It doesn't matter if they're not right-handed or left-handed, you can do either way. And so I really love my mashingers. Another thing I do is I put my needles in here because needles are really important for successful quilting and you need to replace your needle every eight hours or so. So if I keep my needle package in my little free motion quilting kit, 
then I can be able to remember, oh yeah, I need to change my needle. The other thing that I keep in there is a marking pen. So this is the Chaco Ace pen. It's a purple one and it's a sprayable, water soluble. So when you finish marking, then you can just spray and then just wipe, wipe off and then you don't have that mark any longer. So those are really helpful tools. The other thing I keep are my pins and I love this little magnet caddy that I got from Clover from the I Love to Sew package. Um, you never know when you need a pin around. And so those are some really useful tools that I keep handy for my free motion quilting. All right, so another really great tip, and I actually did go and I did spray base this quilt because I just really love having um, my quilt already spray basted and I don't have to worry about stopping and starting for my pins. So, but a really good tip that I learned from a class I took was when you do your spray, first of all, don't spray the batting. All that does, it just soaks it up and it's not helpful. So that's a way to save on that. But the one that I love the most is when you have sprayed everything and everything's in place, you press it. Obviously you're not gonna press a minky backing, but you're going to press the flannel or cotton, you press both sides. Minky, you just press it nice and, and good from the top, okay? So, another really good tip, especially for um, new quilters who are most of those people who are watching this video, is to use your walking foot at the beginning. So, what I like to do is I like to use my walking foot for the ditch, okay? So, stitch in the ditch. This is, so every seam is, a st is the ditch, okay? And you're going to use your walking foot. Now, before you ever do any free motion quilting or your walking foot, you're going to want to bring your bottom thread up. So in my machine, I need to put down my presser foot. I need to bring it forward, so roll it forward towards myself, lift up my pressure foot, and actually, this is when my little quilting awl works really well as well. So it has this nice little tip. So I just bring it down and around, and then I can scoop out my bottom threads, and I, now I can pull up my bottom thread to my top. And the reason I do this is because I don't want to have a nest of threads going and messing around with underneath my bobbin, okay? My, so this way I have my top thread, I have my bottom thread, they're both in my hand, and I have I can avoid that problem. Now, I have, um, so right now I'm using my, my walking feet to help me because I have a walking foot on top and I have my, my feed dogs underneath. So I am just gonna go ahead and I am going, now when you're using a walking foot, depending on your machine or whatever, um, they're all different. So you don't really wanna go too fast because you wanna allow, that fabric to go through. Now when you think about it, you, some places you actually have five layers of fabric. You have your backing, you have your batting, which is thicker than your fabric, and then depending on where you hit your quilt, you have your seam, right? And it has a double fold, and then that's on top of your regular top. So there are some places where you're going five layers that you're going through. So we want to be nice and gentle. And so we're just going to keep going. We're going to be stitching in the ditch. So I recommend, um, another thing that's really helpful is just kind of trying to keep your quilt nice and flat. And um, you want to adjust your sewing machine to the feature. If you have it on your machine, needle down. So when you stop, when you take your foot off the, the presser foot, then, um, or your, your pedal, you're going to have the needle stays down. Because if your quilt shifts or something happens, if it drags off, you're gonna stay where it is. So that's a really helpful tool. And you just wanna to wanna to keep, and oh, that's the other thing. So whenever you move your quilt, you wanna to need to readjust your hands, stop, let your foot go down, your needle go down, readjust, okay? Otherwise, it just, it's just gonna float. It's not gonna be successful. So you keep an eye on your seam guiding it through, you're not shoving it through, you're guiding it through. 
Um, one of the things that you need to be aware of if you have a, even a larger quilt, this is a great size of quilt to practice on. But if you have quite a large quilt, and I have quilted the queen size, no problem on this machine, um, you don't want to have the drag that happens. And so when I'm quilting a larger quilt on my sit down machine, I will put one of those six foot kind of banquet tables or foldable tables and I will put it like an L shape on my machine. So I'll sit here and then I can have all of that fabric, I'll be sorry, all that quilt on that table so then there's not that drag. So that's a really helpful thing. I'm gonna just keep going. We wanna keep it nice and flat. So when you come to the end, just sew about half an inch or an inch off of it. You're gonna loosen it up. And then if you want to, I have a little um, stitch ripper there, or yeah, thread ripper ripper. Okay, so you're gonna continue going down. I recommend you can um, quilt all your horizontal and then all your vertical. So once I finish that, I'm gonna, Oh, so your challenge is, before I stop, you quilt, stitch in the ditch, all of your major seams here, and then I'm going to show you some really great ways of quilting in your squares. So they are all secured in place. You can see on the back, it's all there. It's so sweet and cozy. Now, you could possibly finish quilting this way and have it all done. Because if you look on, when you purchase your batting, it's going to give you the information that you need to know how far apart your quilting needs to be for it to be secure. So for this, um, for most of the batting that we have, it's eight inches apart. And so if you take your tape measure and you measure, and of course we know because we cut them out, we could actually leave it at this and your bat your batting will be secure after many, many washes, okay? Um, however, since this is my favorite part of um, the quilting process, I'm going to show you some great ways of how to do your free motion quilting. Now, as I mentioned, uh, so I have two online classes uh, for free motion quilting through Imagine with Riley Blake. The first class is totally meant for beginners. This is what the um, book looks like. Beginning free motion quilting with Dara Thomason. Isn't it beautiful? And so this, um, this actually is the, you purchase this book, but the videos are all free. And so I have all the information on thread and needle size and darning foot, all of that is there to help you. They just give you some really great tools. Just like I have my toolbox for my free motion quilting supplies, those are going, they're going to give you a lot of really good tools to help you build on your skills. So I would refer you to that. I have, um, it's, it's so nice, it's edited professionally, it just is great. So. Uh, and this is a workbook, so if you want to have more practice, you can go and you can purchase the workbook along with it. And it also comes with two free patterns. Uh, there's a tote and there's a quilt. And they not only do they give you the pattern to make them, but they give you a quilting guide of how you can use that. And it really does reinforce the 10 stitch designs that I teach in my beginning free motion quilting class. The second class is an intermediate, so I do and it's called Inspired by Nature. And so we have feathers and pebbles and wood grain and hoodoos and just a couple different kinds of feathers actually, and flowers and really learning about embellishment and even using that within um, different shapes of quilting and etc. So I recommend that to you as well. All right, so quite often when we come across a quilt and we're not sure how to quilt it, um, I find it's a really good idea to get, draw out your quilt on a blank sheet of paper. I go to U-Haul and I purchase the box of wrapping paper from U-Haul. And why I do that is I will draw out the quilt and then I will audition different designs. 
Now, when I teach my free motion quilting classes in person, I supply the U-Haul paper. It's very fancy, I know. But what we do is we, we learn the skills and then we draw them out and then we can put them on practice in our quilt sandwich as we learn. So one thing that I, so my plan for this one was stitch in the ditch, which we did, and we come all the way down, we have our walking foot, and then we're going to audition different designs. So I encourage you to do that, and then we just have to go for it. And so I've broken it down um, one step further. So here is my idea for the nine block, okay, the nine patch. So we are going to be doing straight-ish lines, and we're going to break free from the walking foot, and we're going to use our darning foot. And so I start here in one corner, and I come, and I'm going to just, and then every time I touch a line, I'm just gonna curve it around. Curve, curve, curve. And it's really nice because I'm actually gonna use the square that I have to be my guide. And then I'm gonna just make it smaller, obviously, and I'm gonna go to my next one, go to my next one, and then I want to retrace so I'm going to stitch back in the ditch. I've already made that line already. I'm going to come back up to this corner and then I'm going to come across, do the same thing, but I want to finish. I have this square down here. So you can decide if you want to come along down here, follow along here, come along here and then come here and then stitch or simply just come around and then finish your, st your stitching that way. So this is a really good approach and I recommend you just draw this out on full scap or even using a dry erase marker uh, with a dry erase board. That's also really helpful for when you're additioning um, skills as well, um, your stitches as well. And then, um, so now I have this block. Now I have this big open space, um, which is only about six inches, but it can be very intimidating. So when I look at this quilt, I'm going to use the fabric as my inspiration. And so I actually have this vertical pattern here that I could actually use as a guideline. So if I wanted to do loops, which when I, my, uh, when I teach my free motion quilting beginners class, I teach how to do the walking foot, and then we use the darning foot, we do straight lines, and then I go into my E's and L's. So since I have some lines here with my arrows, it, it's, it's almost like, you know when you went to school and you learned how to um, print? It's the same idea. So I'm gonna use, so when, we, you know, we were elementary school, the primers, and we learned how to do our L. We came up there, we did an E, and then we did an L, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing on our quilt. So I can do, I can decide, I'm gonna do all L's, or I can do two L's, and then I could do two E's, and then I'm gonna do two L's, and two E's. That's totally my decision, it's my design. And then if I wanted to do the same thing going along, I can do that, or I could do my L, I could do my two E's, I do my L, and L, and my two E's. Or if I wanted, I could bring them across. There's so many options. So this is a really good idea, but not all fabric's gonna be like that. So if you had a big open space and you didn't want to break it apart like that, then you could do something different. Even if you wanted, you have your six inch block, you could actually use your walking foot and you can go corner to corner and then you could do your E's and you could just fill out the space that's allotted you. And then you could come right back and do the same thing. And you could create this. So I hope that as I'm speaking to you, the ideas are coming to you of how you could approach this block. However, I want you to think though, so if you don't want to do any of those, you don't have to right now. You can draw and you can design if you don't want to, to take this step forward. But I really encourage you to do that. Now, if you're saying, oh, wait, Dara, this is too much on this, I have a really good solution for you. My husband 
and I have been doing some spring cleaning and he told me that we have too many sheets in our linen closet. So I said, all right. So I went through my linen closet and I found some old sheets. I found a sheet of my husband's that he had at university, which was like 20 years ago, maybe 18 years ago. So I thought, nope, okay, that's it. And so I ripped that sheet up into, I, I like about a 20 by 20 sheet of, um, you know, a quilt sandwich. And I threw some of my scrap batting that I have lots of, and I put a different color, a contrasting color thread in my machine, and I just did some doodling and just some free motion quilting. So if you are feeling really anxious about that, that is a huge thing. And I, when I started doing my free motion quilting, it's exactly what I did. I got old fabric I didn't care about. Um, I got old sheets even from the thrift store and I, I collected old batting. I actually locate, I contacted the ladies at the local guild and said, do you guys have some old batting you don't care about? Um, and so they were able to give me some pieces and I just practiced and I didn't worry about um, wasting anything because that was devoted to helping me practice my free motion quilting. So that's a really good way to increase your confidence. So this quilt could be actually finished just the way it is um, and we could um, do the binding on there and everything but I'm going to just show you what some free motion quilting looks like and how we can embellish our quilt. So I'm going to put my gloves on, just move my items here. I like to have a nice clean space and um, so as I do this, I just want to um, remind you for a guide for th what thread to use, the needle size, um, all of those things, those basics, I really encourage you to go. It's free um, on Imagine with Riley Blake and it gives you so much information um, about what you need. So with my uh, quilting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in a corner and I'm not going to put my other glove on because what I'm, what I am going to do is I bring up, so I put my presser foot down, I hold on to this thread to give it a little bit of pressure and actually I don't even need my pin, I can, or my awl here, um, I could just poke this out. Now I have both threads, I have my thread on my top and my thread on my bottom. Get my foot in order. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna secure my stitches. So I'm gonna go back and forth two or three times. And so now it's secure. So I can take my scissors and just give them a little trim and put them in the trash. And so now I'm ready to go. So I get my gloves on. Uh, some people really love listening to some music, you know, lower your shoulders, do some shoulder rolls. Um, mute, like a podcast. I tend to listen to podcasts or um, I listen to Netflix because I don't really watch it because I'm quilting. But I really find like something like a really good podcast or something just really helps me get into the zone or some music. So I've secured my stitches here and now I'm ready to just bring it around. When I'm holding my quilt, I am actually using just the tips of my fingers and the edge of my palm. One of the things that I do when I'm quilting is I'm always looking ahead of where I'm going, kind of like when you're driving. And so I bring it to my point. Now, it's hard to see on the, on the video, but you'll be seeing more detailed pictures as I show you. Now, if you want to not, if you're worried about your stitching, you don't want to show so much, then you can, you get a busier fabric and you get a blending thread. So you don't really see it as much and you don't worry so much about it. If you, uh, the more confident you become and the more you want to showcase your quilting, then you would do uh, a contrasting thread or use a solid color that will show off your stitching that much more. So this one, it just happened that I'd start in the corner and this is the, the gold hashtag, which I love this fabric. It's so adorable. Um, so then we're going to continue on 
with that. So just remember we're using this part of our um, hand and our fingers just a really light grip. And we want to keep it really consistent. The other thing I do is I actually use my walking foot. It has this metal um, ring around it, well an oval. And I kind of use that as my guide to really have an even stitch. Okay, so I gotta change my hand, so I stop my machine, and then I come around. Now if I wanna if I want to pick up the speed then I have to of my foot, the needle, I have to pick up the speed of my hands. I don't have a stitch regulator in my machine. So I have to coordinate the speed of my foot to the speed of my hand. So now I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna stitch back up the ditch that I already established. And so I can choose if I wanna change the direction of my lines or if I wanna keep them the same. I'm gonna keep them the same. So I'm hitting that target. Going around. Okay, I've made it to the corner. So now I need to decide, do I go down here, over here, and back over here, or do I come around and go to this corner? Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually just gonna come around the stitch and the ditch line, because I already have that line established. And it's quite simple for me just to move my hands along. And I'm back to where I need to be. So depending on which angle that you want to quilt from, um, just kind of experiment with what feels most comfortable with your hands and what perspective. A little faster. Okay, so I finished. So I'm just going to do a few secure the stitches, so back and forth, and now that's good. So I can take that off or I can just travel to my next block. Now so this is my um, block, so I'm going to just, as a, as a visual, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I basically have eight of these arrows. So I can decide if I want to do pairs. So I can do this set, and then, so one, two, and then two, two. So that works out really well. So I'm going to, um, one thing you have to be careful of when you're on the corner is you don't want the backing fabric to flip up. So it might be a good idea, and this is called a basing stitch, so I'm just gonna go really big here. I don't want this to be super tight, but I want us to kind of secure down the edge. So I'm just gonna, pull it faster than I would normally so I have a longer stitches. So that's secured down now and then I'm going to come around and I'm just going to do that idea of one E, two little E's, one big L, and then two little E's and then an L. Two more E's. And then an L. And then an E. I'll end with that. So now I'm going to come back up here. Now, I could do the same one in the same row. I would love to see your variations of this. This is really a fun design. So I'm going to keep going on my quilt. I can't wait to see what you've done on your quilt. And we're gonna share with the our results at the end. Now remember, this is new to you. I'm looking for you just to go for it. I'm not, this is not a quilt show. This is not um, being judged. This quilt is going to, towards, to give to someone in need and they're gonna love every stitch that you made. So please don't worry. Uh, jo uh, comparison is the thief of joy. We're all going to do at our own rate and our own speed. So happy free motion quilting. And just to know our next class, I'm gonna teach you how to 
square up your quilt, so cut it all off. We're going to learn how to make a binding and how to put the binding on. And we're going to talk about a little label on your quilt so that that recipient of that quilt knows that that quilt was made by love. All right, can't wait for our next one.